Welcome to Kuala Lumpur, basking in the tropical sunshine at just three degrees off the equator. We're here to launch English from Afar, the new English textbook that seems to be grabbing attention. Malaysia, at the crossroads of the old spice routes, historically developed a multicultural society before the term was even coined in the West, making it the, the ideal place to observe English and the problems that she delivers on a regular basis. The modern city centre is a long way from the days of early British relations with Malaya through the East India Company. Today, as on any Saturday, choppers are on their way to the different markets, the traders at Loyat Plaza locked in another day's battle, the KLCC where sharp-eyed bargain hunters are busily at work, the iconic Twin Towers serve as a photo opportunity for any tourist visiting the capital. As usual, the city's leafy suburbs are choked with traffic. But much of this change has taken place in the 20 years Bruce has lived here, transforming this nation and city into a throbbing, pulsating metropolis. A Southeast Asian financial center, warning high-tech companies that rub shoulders with traditional industries. A multimedia super corridor and a smart tunnel which acts as a road traffic relief bypass yet during the frequent tropical downpours converts itself into the biggest drain I've ever seen, channeling hundreds of thousands of gallons of rainwater out of the city, preventing flash floods from the resulting bedroom. We should talk to educators, business people, and even students in our quest to find out what it is that makes Malaysia tick and how Bruce has woven it into his book. In addition, we're giving away up to 30 copies of English from Afar in our quiz about the book and Bruce. Magnus Carter, journalist, media expert and reputation consultant, wrote a powerful and revealing forward which sets the scene very neatly. One of Bruce's key points was to approach English not so much as a teacher, but as a student or the man in the street. These are the people who Bruce is aiming his book at. I was quite pleasantly surprised when Bruce asked me to review his book for this program. Presently surprised because I have known this Masale, Bruce, for over 20 years. And conversing with him through these years has always been so present and full of laughter. He's a humorous British. I'm only surprised that this book didn't come earlier especially now that he could officially say lah after making Malaysia his second home. I say it's about time lah. The man in the street read this book and learn English in a different approach. Right from the first page about the scene with Malaysians making mistakes, about phonography for phonography, he leaped up at me. And I like the title of this book, English from Afar. It's so down to earth and close to the people in the street whom he targets to help. Is this the mysterious behavior of the British humor he claimed in his book? Or is it the open-mindedness of the people who will benefit most from this book? In the preface of this book, he posted the questions of him changing career after 32 years. It struck me that transmitting an understandable message across has always been his strength and communication in his fashion is a trait of him being a good communicator. And the willingness to share his knowledge is a passion in him as an educator less of a career is the passion. To me, he's still very much a good engineer with the talent of precise communication skill. Isn't the systematic approach in bringing out the essence of communication, not just the use of words, but making the book come alive with his sense of humor and examples used. A perfect combination traits of the two careers 
or should I say passion. As a learner of English as a second language, I find making the chapters short and to the point helps, as it gives a breathing space for digestions of new knowledge and a reading milestone check for someone like me who is not a regular reader. It encourages the reader to go on. Just looking at the table of contents, it struck me that this is an interesting way of learning and a very relevant one too, especially in an Asian perspective. I look forward to reading his sequel, which I'm quite sure will be packed with surprises and as impactful a learning tool. Hi Bruce. Five years? Five years. Five years ago, I came back from Madagascar. And remember we met up in Kuda? Yeah, it's... I think with Ray and Fran to film those clips for her Kuda Turtle yes. Society. What have you been doing since then? Well, since then, uh, I've uh, become an author, uh, full-time. And uh, this is my first work that we're discussing here today uh, about English um, and really being lazy. <laughs> the obvious question, why did you write it? I've lived here for 20 years um, and people come up to me and said, oh, how, what do I do in this situation? What does this mean? How do I deal with that? And time and time again, they've been the same kinds of questions. And so I just thought to myself, well, why not just write it all down? As simple as that? Simple as that. What made you choose the precise range of topics? Well, again, it was based, I think, on what the people I was talking to were asking me. Now, these were the things that they were saying, can I help them? What does this mean? How do I say this? What do we do when I'm in this kind of situation? And, I mean, for example, one of the best ones was, you know, people would say to me, you know, I, I get worried and I get frightened when people sort of say, uh, excuse me, could I repeat that? And I keep trying to explain to them that actually that's the most important question they could ever be asked. Because what it actually means is I've put down what I was doing, I'm listening to you, and I, you've got my attention. You know, it, it's not like I'm trying to tell you something. And so it's, you've got everything going for you. And to run away from that situation is actually the biggest mistake you could ever make. And I want to use the same process, actually, when I go on to do Volume 2. But I, I want to go further than that because I actually want to involve other people. That's why on the website and I've got to get involved page so that we can actually get more people involved in this. It's often said that Malaysians, and especially young people today, don't read don't read books and you know I, dry, I walk along the streets and I see them all walking along like this reading their reading their iPads or whatever why is that and what can we do about it well I think that this actually is a bigger problem I think really you see when you go back to the days when people started writing books what competition was there for people's leisure time not a lot right so Nowadays, of course, we've got the football, we've got the karaoke, we've got the cinema, we've got the television, we've got, you know, being on the internet, you know, uh, chatting with friends in different countries. We can be sitting in a restaurant and this kind of thing. So there's so much more competition for people's leisure time. And I think that this is where us authors are actually making a little bit of a mistake. Because I don't think we've actually updated our ways of communicating ideas, getting people to, getting buy-in, if you like. But my experience with this book has been, very simply, yeah, you know, people started to skim through the first few pages. By the time they get around to about chapter four or five, they've been noticeably reading it in a bit more detail. Mm-hmm. And you know, by the time I get about chapter eight, you know, it's almost like I don't want to sound big-headed, but it's almost like they can't put it down. So it's 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 a connection issue, as far as I'm concerned. I've always thought about maybe writing a book. What's it like to do it? Because I've always been diverted, right? Other things have, have been far more interesting. But what's it like to write a book? I think it it's, it's great fun. Um, I enjoyed it. 
I mean, it's a wonderful excuse to be lazy and get up late in the mornings and go to bed late. Uh, it takes a, it does take a, a level of self-discipline. Um, but I think also, you know, it, it's, it's great because not only do you start writing about what you know, but then other ideas come along as you're writing, which actually you build into your research. And so it becomes a journey as well, it becomes a discovery. And you actually learn more about the topic yourself. And so, I mean, I, I found that a, a very interesting thing to do. You know, I, How much of the book is Bruce Peters? Oh, I would say probably at least 75% of it. And stories of, of past life, etc.? Well, I think so, because that's how you make situations come to life. Yeah. That's how you make it relevant. Um, I'll give you one example. Uh, when I was very, very young, uh, we had uh, a visitor from Germany who used to come over and visit us very regularly. She was learning English at uh, the University in Dusseldorf. And I remember <laughs> she slipped up on one little piece of English. She, uh, she, she thought we were going to go by feet. Which, course, which seemed more logical to her. But of course... In translation. Exactly. Whereas in English, you actually go by foot. <laughs> so yep. those are the little things that make it fun uh, and so on. In your opener, you have a press clipping. Can you explain the relevance of that? Yeah. <clears throat> I think the press clipping really illustrates, in a nutshell, the whole reason why. Um, this came from, I think it was the Star newspaper in the early part of the millennia. And it was just really rather amusing because it, it showed how a little mistake can turn into really something quite surprising. Yeah. Um, and they, it, it's one of those things, you know, English like she's spoken here, people sometimes tend to use words that sound kind of like the one they really want to use, but actually the one they're using is somehow ludicrous or funny in context. And that happens. And so I just thought, you know, what a nice way to start the book. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you again. Good to Not see you again, so Peter. Long. And I wish you all the best with your book. Thanks very much, Peter. Thank you. That's a bit of fun. And in order to find the method of giving away 30 books, we've got a few questions we'd like you to answer. The answers may be in the book. They may be general knowledge. The first question. A good communicator will not assume that they've been understood. True or false? I'm speaking with Kristen Gann, one of the co-founders of Guru. Good morning, Kristen. What is Guru and why is it so unique? So Guru is an online tutoring platform and we focus specifically on English and communication skills. Um, there are three co-founders, me, Keithan and Irina, and we've been best friends since we were high school. Yeah, so we've always wanted to start something together and do something together. At the time, uh, which is about two years ago, me and Keithan were still working in the UK and we decided that because of that, we would need it to be online-based business. So we thought, uh, we also wanted to focus on education. We're starting off with Malaysia first. Yeah, so being able to give back to the ed education system, contributing in a certain way. And at the time, um, there's a lot of focus overseas, like in the UK and the US, on learning languages online. We thought, why not do that in Malaysia, but focus on um, something that maybe hasn't been given that much of priority, which is soft skills and communication skills. At the moment, we're focusing just on English. And can I ask what attracted you to Bruce as a tutor? <laughs> so I actually interviewed Bruce. Um, so when the tutor applies to us, we, the three of us will interview the tutors individually. And uh, I was assigned Bruce, and I actually wanted to interview Bruce because you usually say, we're interested in becoming a tutor. So then we, after checking the qualifications, you know, we revert back to them and we call them in for an a Skype interview, an online interview. But with Bruce, he actually delivered a very long and interesting story in his email. It was very detailed and it was, he already shared so much about his personal life. So yeah. we were actually very interested in, in meeting him. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad we did. 
What was your reaction when he broke the news to you that he was publishing a book on English? Um, well, it fits perfectly with what we're trying to do. Um, it's fantastic because he he's been an amazing tutor on Guru. His students absolutely love him and it's the way he engages with them and is personable and is fun. Do you think he's managed to translate his tutorials into his book? Oh, absolutely. So, what I personally like about the book is that it doesn't look intimidating. <laughs> yes, I agree with that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, there might be quite a few chapters in there, which I, you know, when I flipped through, I was like, well, this is about 35, I think. But um, each chapter is about a page, oh, two pages long, two to five pages. Yes. And that when someone is trying to learn a new language or is trying to improve on English and a book is being written in English, I think that's key. Like you need something that people can relate to and they can they can feel like they've accomplished something after a certain chapter. Well, it's been really lovely speaking with you today. You. Don't you think some of your criticisms of the uh, of the modern syllabus is overly critical? Perhaps they are. But you see, I remember one very simple thing from when I was at university, when I was doing my engineering degree. And that was, I was studying transistor circuits and I could understand those. Um, man, man, man. I was doing another course on, I think it was oscillation and damping. And this had me completely confused. And I remember I think it was probably after one very drunken evening in the college bar that I came home one night to do some revision for my final exams. And I suddenly had this flash of inspiration. Hang on a minute. I went, all the equations for these two very different subjects are exactly the same. It's just that the names of the parameters are different. And so I'm thinking to myself, can't we simplify this, this, the syllabus for students? Because if you actually look at it and think about it this way, and it's a point I make in the book, um, if we say on average school students attend school for something like 40 hours a week, okay, and then let's make the assumption that uh, for every hour of classwork there has to be an hour of homework, that means uh, 80 hours a week. Uh, in most countries that I know of, there are actually labour laws, and in particular child labour laws. But it seems that when it comes to school, they're easily melted. Yeah. You know, yeah. the numbers just don't add up. So this is why I'm critical. And I'm just saying, can we not rationalise syllabuses into core topics and then deal with the application of those syllabuses yeah. in different situations? Yeah. And that way simplify and reduce the stress on our students. Mm. Good point. What's your vision of the future? And I, 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 I'll tighten you up on this a little bit because I know if I let, let it an open question like that, <laughs> we'll be here till tomorrow. But what's your vision of the future of the English language? I think the English language gets more important every day. Um, there's no doubt about that. Uh, we see uh, it, it in instruction books. We see it's the international language of business. Uh, and it's not, that's not going to change. The reason for that is, very simply, more people speak English as a first, second or third language than any other language in the world. And that includes Chinese and the Indian language. And especially in business. Yes. You know, if, you, if you look at French, that's the language of diplomacy and will always be the language of diplomacy. English is, it, it, it's the old thing. It's the British Empire. It was so big. It was so huge. Its influence was so great. But one of the things that I think is very, very important is we must never, ever lose those beautiful, charming, colourful expressions like we get in Malaysian English. You know, where God, see how, also can, la. Can do la. Exactly. You know, that's, we, we must make sure that those are maintained because otherwise... When we lose them, we will have lost something very, very special. Good morning, I'm speaking with Jun Lung, one of Bruce's recent students. Good morning, Jun Lung. Good morning. I'd like to ask you, you're one of his most recent students, what do you think was different about the way he carried out the course? He's very interactive. He wants 
the student to be to not only just listen to him but also to talk with him to discuss uh, it's, it's, it wasn't a one-to-one -one lecture it was more to to a conversation and that's, that's what's so great about it um, in school we rarely have any uh, interaction between uh, the teacher and the student uh, it was mostly just uh, the teacher comes in the teacher gives the work and you do the work but Bruce he tries to pull you into the course he uh, and What's significant about this is that I end up not only like learning uh, what I'm supposed to learn, which is which is uh, English, but also to learn how to like you know uh, to open up to uh, how to small talk, how to have a, a casual conversation. So he gives he's giving you confidence that you can talk to people without being scared of talking. I guess it could be put in that way, yes. Fantastic, wow, that's awesome to know. Um, and if you had to pick one thing about Bruce which makes him special as a tutor, mm. what would you think and say that was? I would say that as a tutor, it's really special of him to be very patient and understanding with you. So were your conversations all about different subjects? Was it about, you know, what sort of subjects? Was it history? Was it, you know, what what did you like talking about? Mostly I, will, I love to talk about, uh, you know, uh, literature in general. Um, it's great to know that, that Bruce himself reads a lot and I could l get some book recommendations from him as well. Um, well, a little birdie told me that you're actually writing a novel yourself, is that correct? That's correct. Wow! <laughs> and how old are you? I am... Um, I'm going to be 18 this month. Fantastic, Eight wow. Month. That's absolutely awesome. Now, if I told you that Bruce had only been teaching English like this for one year, would that surprise you? Yes, it would. I honestly, the, the way that he, he teaches, I, I would have thought that he had like uh, probably more than a decade of experience but the way he handles students so smoothly and the uh, how, how he speaks and how he manages to get what he wants across the student that's amazing if you could achieve that in one year and finally if Bruce was going to be doing another course would you be interested in taking another course in another syllabus with him if it's mean if it just means not only just to be able to learn more but to, to speak with him more. Yeah, I would love to talk with him more. He's a very interesting person. Fantastic. Well, Jun Lung, it's been fabulous talking to you today. Can anybody hear me? Good morning, IKM. Lovely to see everybody here today. And we're all awake. How about that? It's a Friday, but we're all awake. Wow. Now then, everybody should have a little blue piece of paper like this. And you're probably wondering why you've been given it. You're about to find out. Well, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Now, uh, where are we? Can we get the first slide up, please? I pulled our little talk today. Uh, don't speak. Communicate. Welcome to English. Yeah. Had a little bit of fun there. I just wanted to warm everybody up because it's a Friday morning, and we're all thinking it's the weekend. The week's over. Most importantly. Thank you very much to Director Mr. Noor and the rest of his team who uh, have kindly allowed me to come and talk to you today. 
I'm not going to go through everybody's name because it would take too long, but please, everybody be assured, have my gratitude and thanks. But also, thanks to you guys, the students. You're why I'm here. So I'd like two words. The only two words of Bahasa I am going to speak today. So, what are you guys, what are you guys expecting? I've been told I've come here to talk to you? You, sir. What, what do you think? <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you think I'm going to tell you? <laughs> come on, don't be shy. Uh, how about you? Do you have an idea what I'm going to tell you? Okay. I'm not going to tell you anything new. What I would like to do is maybe change the way you think about English. But let's ask ourselves the question. Why does Director not have speak English on Thursday? Any ideas? Practice English perhaps? Learn a bit more English? Why is English so important? Can we? English is spoken as a first or second language in over 70 countries around the world. The bits in red are where English is spoken. That's almost half the world. So you begin to see how important English is. It's the language of business. It's also the language of standards. If you look at technical manuals, washing machines, air conditioners, motor cars, think about getting on an airplane, you know, AE380, jumbo jet, whatever, and flying all the way from London to Kuala Lumpur. Now it's easier for everybody just to speak in English, but so many people know English. This is why English gets more important every day. How about when you're chatting? Do you do it in English? We've got a few basic things. It's simple. You've got something to tell me. But you need to get my interest. We're sitting here listening to what you've got to say. Our ears are going like radar dishes because we want to know what you want to say. Does it frighten you, the idea of speaking in English? What does it mean when somebody says, sorry, I didn't get that. Can you repeat that? What do you think that might mean? It actually means you've got my attention. I've put down what I'm doing. I'm listening to you. So if I say, sorry, could you repeat that? The worst thing to do is to go away. Because you've got, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm listening. I'm waiting for you to tell me. You've got two basic groups of people when you're talking. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the people like me who grew up speaking English, and there's the people who learn English like you guys. We in the West use laughter a bit like Malaysian people use smiling. It's a bit like saying, that's all right. We will get this together. Laughter is an icebreaker. Make sure you are understood. So keep it simple. And being asked to repeat means you've got the attention. And if you want to learn more, it's all in my new book, which comes out in the middle of the year. Staff of uh, IKM, Mr. Director, Ms. Sabrina, thank you very much. And most particularly, Thank you to you guys for giving me half an hour of your precious time today. Talking to Henry Koenig, Director St. George's International School, Siem Reap, Cambodia. You've known Bruce for nearly 15 years in the telecoms industry. Was this book ever in the air? Yes, quite a surprise. However, with this book, Bruce has put his many experiences. While traveling and working over many years and communicating with others in different cultures, whose ability was often wanting to very good use.
Do you believe this book is relevant and useful to your students? It offers an amusing and an interesting look at the many ways of using English to achieve fluency and good understanding and to avoid communication pitfalls in any situation. It also becomes evident on reading this book that the richness and usefulness of our English grammar is almost unlimited when understood well. We've seen all these reviews, but can you distill down the essence of what makes this book so valuable as Magnus Carter says in its foreword? Meanings can evolve over time. And because it is not a perfect language as such, the focus for users and teachers of English needs to be on using suitable English language to communicate fluently when presenting arguments or discussing with others, rather than focusing on grammatical perfection. Do you think there is a sense in which he talks to his students and readers alike? Learners as well as teachers of English are encouraged to understand the many ways of using this almost universal language when correct understanding is essential, or as Bruce puts it, for ensuring that meaning is transferred in whatever situation they find themselves. Do you find it enlightening? And does it change any of your perceptions? This book certainly encouraged me to think we should give more emphasis and spend proportionally more time on our language teaching in the full curriculum school where I'm working. We should focus much more in our teaching of learners of English on ways of using grammar flexibly to always convey understanding. Thanks very much, Henry. Earlier this morning, I spoke with Christine Gann, one of the co-founders of Guru. I'm now very pleased to welcome Irina Alamin, one of the other co-founders, three schoolgirls who started their business together. Hi, Sandy. Good morning, and thanks for having us here today. What are the typical problems you find faced by a guru student trying to learn English? I think um, the problem that we find most of our students face is just their confidence when it comes to speaking English. We find that majority of the students, they actually um, have a pretty good grasp of the language. They're able to write well, but when it comes to speaking the language, um, they just clam up. It's either a lack of practice, they don't have enough people to speak it with, or they're embarrassed that they might be mispronouncing words or using the wrong grammar, so they just tend not to even try to speak English. And could you tell me what the craziest problem you've had to sort out at Guru? Oh, wow. So many, I can't even think of one um, at the top of my head. I suppose starting out Guru was one of the craziest things um, we've done together because none of us had done a business before so this was our first time and at the time when we started Guru, um, Christine and Kifan were both working full-time in the UK so there was a lot of um, time difference that we had to manage as well as working with people in Malaysia and just you know we had no tech background as well and we had to start create a website from scratch so that was a pretty fun but uh, what a crazy time for us. I've seen from the website that Bruce has generated a tremendous amount of good feedback for his work. What, where do you think Bruce gets his relevance? And just how does he engage with, with his students? I think why our students resonate so well with Bruce is because he's got a great big personality. So when you're having a lesson with him, it's not intimidating. And it doesn't feel like you're, you know, he's. It doesn't feel like a student-teacher relationship. Um, he make he thinks outside the box. He makes the lessons fun, and that's the feedback that we get from our students. And that's what we get as well when we work with Bruce. So Bruce, um, it's his personality, I would say, is his greatest asset. It's been lovely speaking with you, Irina, today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Sandy. It's been great. What is total immersion?
difficult part of putting together a program like this is just how much can you talk about in 40 or so minutes. We couldn't possibly cover everything and therefore what was important to talk about and discuss. I've been astonished by the feedback so far. I wanted to say a personal thank you for the support a great number of people have given me in this project. Family, what little there is left, friends, new friends too. People who have assembled to work very much as an ad hoc team. There's Hannah, Alexa, Andrea, Stephanie and Joe at Troubadour in the UK. To Poir and Henry Koenig. I have a huge debt of gratitude to Magnus Carter, who very unfortunately couldn't be with us today. Magnus, I hope that you have been able to tune in at least. Friends here, Eric Delvin, Darwin, Joseph, have all played an essential part. Peter and Sandy for braving the North-South Highway for a mad dash from Singapore to do the recordings. Kristin, Irina and Jun Long. I would like to take a moment to talk about Volume 2. To keep our relevance and so on, I aim to open it up. We need to hear your issues that confuse with English. We will institute a guest author and contributor program. No matter if you have an idea for a topic or want to write a chapter on a topic you feel passionate about or anywhere in between. There's a million ways we've thought of how to get involved and probably a million more. Maybe you have an amusing incident. Poir reminded me of a good one when we were once both flying to Phnom Penh. Due to an outbreak of avian flu, the airlines couldn't offer the usual chicken or fish dish. I asked the hostie what was the choice to be told seafood or fish. Now this was rather a problem as I could eat neither. Malaysian Airlines came up with an instant pot noodle. But that's what the Get Involved page at our website www.pa-com.org is all about. You may be sure that even if we can't answer all the emails and comments, they are read by human eyes. So before I hand back to Peter to wind up for us, I'd just like to thank you for joining us today. There are 30 paperback copies of English from Afar up for grabs. To submit your answers to the website, then follow the links. Just in case you missed one of the quiz questions, they're also on the website. You've seen and heard what people are saying, but the key part is fun. Putting the fun back into learning. Don't forget Bruce's own words. He wants to reach out and hear more about the issues that matter with English, for you and its use. Our target is a thousand researchers and writers involved by the end of 2019. Don't forget to check out Bruce's Facebook and Twitter pages. Tweet and share with your friends as well as people you know. And finally, the book is now available through major retailers as well as from Troubadour. With that, it's time to say goodbye from Kuala Lumpur and thanks for watching.